Hey listeners, welcome back to Story and More podcast. This is Indu. Today you will be listening to the second part of a little girl called Jane, a true crime story. Listener discretion is advised. The names of the victim and relatives are changed for privacy and identity protection. Jane was missing. Her parents cried out loud for help. The people at the terminal rushed towards the waiting room hearing them cry. The watchman was asked to open the door. He was hesitant. The terminal was yet to open for business. He tried to reason that Jane had to be inside and asked her parents to check again. Jane's father grew irate. The family was already traumatized. The watchman's hesitance wasn't helping. He yelled at the watchman and so did the bystanders. Watchman had to cave in. He opened the door of the waiting room. Jane's father wasted no time. He rushed out calling out Jane, hoping she would be somewhere at the terminal. The others searched the buses parked. There were just three buses at the terminal at that point in time. She wasn't in there either. They extended their search to the railway station, but it seemed Jane had vanished into thin air, leaving no trace whatsoever. A disheartened father returned to the bus terminal where Jane's mother waited anxiously. Tears rolled down her cheek when he told her Jane couldn't be located. A family vacation had turned ghastly, one that could never be forgotten. The manager of the bus terminal told Jane's father to file a missing report with the Pulton Bazaar police station at Guwahati. It was nearing dawn. The terminal had just opened for operation when the handyman of the bus that was to leave at 6.30 a.m. requested the manager for early departure of their bus. He told him the driver wanted to leave early that day. The manager found that odd. Why would he want to leave early? He refused. The police arrived. The watchman and the others at the terminal were questioned. The watchman definitely was on their radar of suspicion, but they found nothing incriminating against him. Having found no trace of Jane, the police returned to initiate search on the missing report. Meanwhile, Jane's parents continued to wait at the terminal. How could they leave without their little girl? At about 8.30 in the morning that day, Travelers complained about dysfunctional toilets in the premise. The manager asked the janitor to look into the problem. In some time, the manager heard the janitor holler as though he had seen a ghost. Ghost would have been a better sight. A child's body surfaced inside the septic tank. It was Jane. She wasn't missing. She was dead. The police was informed. The manager raised suspicion about the watchman since only he had access to the room. The manager also told the police that he suspected the driver, conductor and handyman of a bus. He told the police about the bruises he noticed on the handyman's face and their unusual request for early departure. Police arrived and the watchman was immediately taken into custody. But the rest of the suspects? The bus had departed at 6.30 in the morning to Jorhat, which is about 304 kilometers from Guwahati. Almost two hours had gone past, but the police managed to intercept the bus by about 10.30 a.m. and the suspects were brought back to Guwahati. 
Meanwhile, the magistrate was informed by the police. The manager was the first informant. FIR was lodged. Inquest report was made by the investigating officer and Jane's body was sent for post-mortem. The report indicated she had been brutally raped and asphyxiated to death. All suspects pleaded innocence. The driver and the conductor of the bus shifted the blame on the handyman. They told the police the handyman had not slept in their bus the previous night and they had no clue about his whereabouts until the bus departed from the terminal. They too said the handyman was edgy and wanted them to leave earlier than usual from the terminal. The handyman pleaded innocence. He said he knew nothing about what had happened to Jane. Though the watchman pleaded innocence too, he could give no good explanation on how anyone could have accessed the waiting room while he held the keys all through the night. Hours passed. Further investigation revealed that the driver of the bus the handyman had slept in that night had asked the handyman the reason for sleeping in their bus, but he didn't give any reason. The driver also told the police that the handyman had changed into a long pant and had boarded their bus to sleep at about 2 a.m. The police searched the premise and recovered the watchman's shorts lying inside the bathroom and the handyman's shorts with white stains from the terminal. The same shorts he had worn before changing into long pants identified by the driver of the bus he slept in. When confronted with the articles recovered, watchman did agree that the shorts belonged to him and soon confessed that he and the handyman went into the waiting room after Jane's mother fell asleep. They carried Jane, who was fast asleep, into the bathroom and raped her. In the middle, she woke up and fought with all her might, leaving bruises on the handyman's face, but they managed to silence her. They took turns. First the watchman raped her and then the handyman. After the gruesome act, they noticed the child was motionless. They knew she was dead. So they decided to hide a body in a septic tank, a place they thought no one would search. His confessional statement was recorded before the magistrate and was admissible in evidence. Armed with confessional statement, the police interrogated the handyman further. He didn't budge. He held on to his plea of innocence. Will the watchman retract his confession? And will the confessional statement of one accused be enough to convict both? Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for staying tuned till the end. And do leave your feedback. I would like to hear from you. And until we meet next, this is Indu signing off.